Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Digital Savages Challenging the Status Quo podcast with your host, Amir Sabirovich. In the previous episode of Challenging the Status Quo, we talked with Chantal van der Berg, neuroscience and neuromarketing expert. And here's a short part of our interview. Uh, I talked about the moments of joy and um, asked people, what are their moments of joy? Because that's the one that gives you the good mood. That's the one that makes you happy. That's the one, if you want to achieve some goals, and all your rewards. And if you want to, if you have a target, what's your reward? What's your moment of joy when you reach that target? And if you describe that moment of joy, you can experience it when you reach that target. I'm certain this got your attention. So, if you're curious about the rest of Chantal's story, Please go one episode back, listen to her, and of course, tune in to our following guest. Today, our guest is Senior Vice President, Regional Office North at Deutsche Telekom. His name is Borislav Tadic, and let's hear his story. Welcome, Borislav. Awesome to have you on the show. Thanks for the invitation. It's great to be the part of your project. Thanks. Hey, uh, you just mentioned that you listened to a couple of our podcasts and of course we're all anxious to hear your background and how you got where you are right now. So could, could you please lead us through your life of, uh, of successes and uh, challenges, failures and uh, everything along? Sure, sure. It'll be a pleasure. So uh, if, if you want to, uh, if I start from the beginning, I mean, uh, I was born in Banja Luka and in, in Bosnia-Herzegovina, ex-Yugoslavia, 90, uh, 1982. Um, I went there uh, to elementary school and uh, gymnasium, uh, spent some, some of the nicest uh, years growing up. Um, however, of course, um, it was during the conflict times uh, there, so basically... Um, also, so there are certain learnings from this period for myself and some life experiences I might share during the, the, the interview. Um, as a matter of fact, since 2004, um, I, I continued my career and my education in Austria, where I also completed my master's studies, worked for several companies, as I did in Bosnia previously. And then during the whole time, I was trying to be in as engaged in many extracurricular activities, um, working with NGOs, with intellectual groups, uh, with different circles. So this somehow followed me also in the other areas or other domains where I've, I've been active and also in other countries because I lived also in Switzerland, uh, in Germany, in US and uh, South Africa and basically um, visited some 70 countries uh, since, since, since that time. And what's your favorite country to live in? That's a that's a good point. You know, um, uh, currently I have to say I would probably not be as long as I am in Germany if I would not like the country. I think it's a very structured country, organized with a well, uh, great justice system, uh, good business opportunities, and also a certain balance between the social, corporate, and and, and other aspects of, of of the society. So that's that's what I like. Um, I have to say, uh, uh, from the nature side, uh, South Africa was beautiful, also very mixed and very diverse in the context of the cultures. And uh, on the other hand, um, uh, on, the, on the other hand, I was inspired by the Silicon Valley and topics you've seen there. You know, the way how people interact, the way how ideas flow, the way how people are are using their creativity and and promotional skills in a best best possible way. So. There's every country brings some advantages, disadvantages. I, I, I really miss also uh, uh, Switzerland. But in a way, um, uh, besides Austria, I, of course, miss uh, Banja Luka and, uh, and my home country. Yeah. And, and uh, what was the age when you left uh, Bosnia? I was uh, leaving Bosnia. So, so basically, uh, as I was 21 um, in, in January 2004, um, you know, everything that, that followed later, I mean, it was a first exit, first major exit from the comfort zone. I have to say I, during my, uh, even during my gymnasium and uh, during the, the, the initial year of, at the Electrotechnical University, uh, University of, uh, um, Electrical Engineering in Banja Luka, for me, the, the, the success formula was the mix of hard work, uh, leveraging, uh, my life's experiences and also, uh, um, understanding how 
uh, you can profit from a tolerant and, and diverse uh, diverse uh, set of people. So basically, when I made this decision, it was, of course, a change of, uh, of the environment, change of the language, change of the certain written and unwritten rules, but also, you know, leaving, uh, leaving family behind, leaving friends behind, leaving some habits, uh, which I nurtured for years uh, behind. And I can say, you know, it's, it, it, was a, it was an important step, you know, it was an important step where you, you focus. Um, um, I have to say, I said, even then, uh, especially I think since I moved to Austria, but even before that, I had a 12 hour work day for me. I don't separate clearly, you know, like work and life and, you know, like I don't make those, those tough orders as something is giving me pleasure, as something is really motivating me. I don't try to classify it. So, so basically this mix of hard work and also life experiences, you know, uh, when you survive a conflict, um, this makes you less sensitive. You know, like I remember my first situation when I arrived in Germany in 2011 uh, to start living in Bonn. And there was a discussion about how electricity, how power was gone for an hour in Munich, you know, and how this was a big deal and everything else. And I, you know, I remembered the days and, and weeks where I didn't, uh, for example, where I lived without electrical uh, power for, for example, 40 days or more. So, so this was also like something that, that, uh, that, you know, like puts, puts a touch on, on, on your experiences, teaches you, you know, how, how to be less sensitive, but more, let's say how, how to, how to be more tough in certain, uh, certain areas of life and really give your best to, to achieve what you want. And maybe the last part is also the element about, you know, um, just searching for serendipity, you know, to be the, at the right spot in the right time. Yeah. If you go for a walk, you know, you might find hundred euros lying on the street. You might meet a friend, you might uh, learn a new skill. If you stay at home and if you're like, uh, you know, thinking, ah, you know, walking is additional effort and why do I really need to do that? Then basically not, nothing good will come out of it. So therefore, these were, these were some of the principles which, which I extremely try to apply since I, since I left Bosnia-Herzegovina. So you, you, you have a strong <clears throat> resilience mode, of course. I believe that yes. all people coming from all republics uh, they yeah. have that uh, <laughs> baked into them. <laughs> like, ah, what are you talking about? Come on. <laughs> true, Lockdown, true. what? <laughs> you have internet, electricity, and food. What, what exactly. else do you need? <laughs> exactly. I think, you know, like it just sensitizes you to, to a different level, you know. You live, you know how to, how is it to live in moderate uh, environment? You know, even at the, I think most of the people, even the richest during, uh, during certain periods of, uh, in, in, let's say 20 years ago, were at the edge of poverty and in very unconditional environment, you know, as, as uh, we uh, had, didn't had opportunity to travel, to experience what the kids of that age uh, could um, um, uh, someone else was having all the privileges of, of life, even living in, 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 I would say, normal family, in that rich families. So basically that, you know, like when you, when you grow up, if you keep that healthy attitude, um, and I think that it's, uh, that it's, uh, something that, that, you know, like can help you to, to stay focused and not to be excited about the small things. Would you say that those circumstances that actually you, you wish upon anybody, um, to happen, of course, uh, everybody should live in, in peace and prosperity. Right. But would you say they, they were a privilege to experience because they gave you another view on life and what to value? Yeah, I, I think I appreciate them. I, I, if I could choose, if my kids would go through that experience, I would say, no, <laughs> I would I <laughs> try to give them that knowledge in another way. And I hope they will not have, uh, or n never be in, in that kind of situation. But what I'm saying is, like you said, it's it's um, it's a kind of if you leverage it, and if you don't have any long-term uh, uh, consequences of uh, from that conflict, like some families or some people did, uh, but from all the other things uh, I said, I think you can definitely turn that into your uh, success and turn that into the way how you operate and be more happy and resilient in life. And you said you left uh, Bosnia when you was 21. And mm -hmm. I'm quite curious, you, you traveled the world, you were in 70 countries. Mm -hmm. um, how did this open up your perspective? What, what was your first feeling when, because, uh, of course, when you grow up in a certain environment, uh, the, the environment also infects you uh, or affects your view on the world and your perception. Mm -hmm. how, how did your perception change when you started traveling and going out? 
that's a that's a great question yeah it did change in a while you know like i said you learn first uh, to appreciate certain things from your environment however your environment looks like you you always think ah it's oh the grass is always greener on the other side etc cetera, etc cetera. but it, it's not like that first you, you remember which things you nurture and appreciate and 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 like and you 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 miss them in a in a way on the other hand you open completely new horizons you know I, I, there's many people who would say you know we have the most beautiful country in the world you know but however there is a fact that many many especially talented and young people are leaving the the southeastern Europe. Uh, in search not only for job, but also for different kind of experience and, and the learnings and everything else. And on that path, uh, they, they discover many things about themselves and about the, the environment. So I think uh, uh, in, in many of the countries, I've seen the things which fascinated me. Is it the culture? Is it the food? Is it the language? Is it the history? Is it the, the way how people are welcoming you or or um, something else. However, you also see in, that they uh, also live through certain disadvantages, have, uh, you know, like, you know, the, the specific environments. And, and, and it's an interesting experience to see, for example, happy faces in, in the middle of the desert in, in, in Western Africa or on the high mountains, mountain peaks of, uh, for example, Ecuador. On the other hand, that you see um, some unhappy people in some other regions where you would uh, assume that everyone has everything necessary for for happiness and prosperity. So it's 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 a great learning, and I would warmly recommend it to everyone to travel as much as possible. And uh, where did you gain the most knowledge by searching for yourself, or by 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 people, or how did you acquire knowledge to broaden your perspective? That's a, that's a good question. I have to say it, it was a mix of elements. One of the, the elements I think it really helps during the, the both the personal development and career is what, what do you bring from your home, you know, where you grew up, you know, if you, you know, you, you should follow uh, uh, your parents' advice and, and especially if it's a, it's a, if it's a stable family and, and with a good and loving family. So basically you can learn a lot by just observing your grandpa, grandma, your parents, your 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 uh, cousins, and, and and people in your environment, and learn from them. That's a starting point. But then, of course, if you go to university, you should not look at it as a, some kind of obligation, you know, something that has to just be done and over with, so that you can go to the next step. I think there is lots of interesting methods and ways of thinking eh, which you can abstract and apply to many other areas. So this is also an important, let's say, uh, Lego. Uh, element which you put into the puzzle and uh, the next four point is uh, of course continuous learning you know I like try every month to, to learn uh, to, to read at least one or two books uh, both professional ones and I also try to do at least one book which is uh, I would say uh, belletristics uh, the the classic uh, let's say novels or something like that trying to open up the perspective but also there's always the means to read to hear the podcasts to read the blogs to to um, look at the magazine when, especially to to also keep, I like the newspapers personally, you know, I, I have a small ritual, you know, reading a daily newspaper um, um, on, on the weekends. So for example, I like Saturday or Sunday in the morning, uh, we're drinking my tea, my green tea, I, I, I like to read. And, and basically you combine all those elements and not to forget the one of the, the 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 most important ones. Observe your colleagues, observe your mentors, your coaches. Interact with them, and try to pick up to cherry pick those skills and those the, the, those elements of knowledge which you would like to have in your in your life, and to integrate all that into one 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 element. Yeah? In this compound effect, because you're of course naming the. The items that are necessary in in today's environment, you do not study and then you know pick a job and do that for upcoming forty years. But mm -hmm. you're more of a polymath where you have to be capable to do various things and be be good at them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what is the definition of success for you? If you ask me, if the bottom line is feeling happy, feeling that you're growing every day, basically living a fulfilled life. And basically also living your life to help your environment, to help the society and others to also be happy and motivated in the process. I think that's more important than saying, for example, success is so much money on my account or it's, uh, is, I don't know, um, having this hierarchical title uh, on my desk or on my, or my office uh, entrance or something like that. Basically, I think you can achieve that through many uh, ways. 
in a business environment, you can leave a trace. For example, you can work on creation of workplaces, you can uh, um, uh, educate other people, you can create a sustainable organizational change. Um, outside of work, you can do humanitarian work, you can in, in, invest your energy into arts or some, some other uh, uh, hobbies. And on an individual level, I think that those persons, only those persons which are really fulfilled in their daily lives in all fields, you know, being healthy, being, you know, like having a good private life, good family besides work, and also good relations with, 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 with their environment, interaction with their environment, they are truly successful. I think the, 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 the holistic approach to, to happiness is, is, is something that I try to pursue. And I think uh, that those people are, from my perspective, those which are the most successful ones. Hey, what, what do you do to the challenge the status quo on a daily basis? How do you do that? That's a, that's, that's a fantastic insight, and it's not an easy question. I have to say, when I think through it, I think the number one would be to ask tough questions. But also, when you're asking questions, it's not the, 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 the next step is not just saying your statement, but then really, really listen, you know? Then challenge the standard answers. If you get a buzzword answer, especially in business, that's quite usually, you know, or some kind of abstract answer, you, you, you try to challenge it. If someone says, we tried it in the past, you say, okay, what was different than in the past? Why did you, who did it? Who did it? How can we then, then make it different so that it's successful? You can ask these five famous whys, you know, until you really understand the topic and you can explain it to the others. When you, when you can explain it to the others, you understood it. But also, I think it's 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 good good way to challenge the status quo is to constantly provide feedback. You know, many people would be afraid of uh, providing, especially critical feedback to to other people because they they are afraid of conflict, they are afraid of uh, you know like like bad feelings, etc. If you do it in a constructive, respectful manner, if you focus on helping rather than judging, I, and if you do it as frequently and as specifically as possible, I think you can do wonders in challenging and changing the, the status. And do you, do you think that that is applicable everywhere? I think in the, most of the, the areas it is. I think you can imply in private environment with friends, uh, with, uh, within, for example, an NGO or uh, some activism context, you can also do that. However, I think, you know, like one element is starting with yourself, you know, and, and, you know, you would hear that as a buzzword, but it's not a buzzword. I can I can confirm that, for example, going out of the comfort zone really changes a person. You know, and it's not not to be understood. There's many, especially now, someone would say, you know, that the millennials are tending to, you know, like change their focus every couple of weeks or every couple of months, uh, producing so-called spaghetti CVs uh, and, and 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 biographies. Uh, that's not what I mean with the going out of the comfort zone. I don't mean being bored with a topic and changing. However, whenever you get into an area and you become an expert into an area in, in this area and you, you you achieve a significant result, um, then and if especially if you're able to repeat that result and if especially if you created a fundament for someone else to able to be able to repeat that success, then you should move into the next next area and you move into the next field. I mean, I worked in different industries from car industry, banking, science industry, international organizations, I don't know, public sector, banking, IT, ICT, et cetera. And in every of those, those fields, I learned a lot. And when you're even when you're within one company, independent, if it's a medium-sized, small company or a huge corporation, or a huge system, you can still there also change within the functions where you're working. You know, whether you work in technology, in HR, in finances, uh, or, or in, in any or marketing or any other segment. So I believe being open to that and changing the the, in the environment and going out of the the comfort zone is an important. It's an important. So thing. so the openness is of course a starting point because Absolutely. of course you can try to broaden somebody's view, but if he's closed or he has an issue with his own ego because that comes from insecurity or the fact that they don't know but do not want to admit they don't know, then it, it, it becomes a challenge. Fantastic point. Yes, <laughs> I can only confirm that because whenever I personally, you know, like took my ego into the equation that, you know, the result outcome of that equation was not good. So I tried really, and I think it was one of the biggest learning curves, you know, 
um, uh, in the in the previous uh, let's say 20 25 years for me that I need to leave ego aside and I have to admit sometimes I fall into the trap and and you know especially when someone is let's say provoking you or or being non-constructive then you get into that element and you want to show that you who who, who or what uh, you are and, and basically you enter that uh, trap but if you're controlling that and in most of the situations today I can do that um, I really enjoy then then the outcome and and I think everyone else is enjoying the the conversation and the process more so fantastic point with with egos we should forget about them we should park them and leave them and and just focus on the growth and on the environment yeah and I, I think for the um, and and the, this is why I said uh, so I, I believe that of course you're you're kind of um, bound by the cultural environment I think for for the modern West or uh, Netherlands for Germany for Switzerland for where um, debate and not looking at uh, differences but looking at uh, where you can comply with each other and see where the positives are. <clears throat> And coming together on the positives and forgetting about negatives, that's uh, the, the the true meaning of an open conversation where you're not trying to convince somebody that you have a point, but you're trying to do things together. Yes. Um, while while in some cultures that is um, that is not so easy because of the hierarchical uh, settlements or uh, uh, ego again, uh, yes. uh, uh, macho cultures. So it's um, it's actually. If you do not change the essence of the culture, uh, then you do not become open. You do not uh, cannot receive um, feedback, constructive feedback, as you you, you just said. And then yes, uh, you, 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 it's, a, it's about focusing on sustainable results. You know, many people focus in in in, in order. To, to address certain things, they focus on the method, they focus on the title, they focus on the environments, or maybe even the tone of certain words. And as long as this tone is respectful, I would focus really on the sustainable results. What's the best outcome for these people, for this situation, for this organization? And then try to not to solve all the problems of the world within a couple of days or a couple of minutes, just try to seek for these pragmatic 80-20, you know, like this pragmatic 80% instead of bland perfectionism and, and do it being self-aware, but still being fully open uh, to, to, to everything, to the environment and to, to great and constructive feedback you can learn from every person at the table. Hey, and <clears throat> when you, when you, if you could go back to that guy that left uh, Banyaluka at the time that just before you left and you would give him some piece of advice when you're starting your career, what, what would that be? What would you tell to him? I would definitely tell him to, to go out of the comfort zone, maybe even earlier than I started going out of the comfort zone. You know, I can remember, I mean, I can share some private aspects, you know, like I remember at certain point in time, you know, like being a teenager and being afraid of heights, you know, being afraid of, uh, you know, like of, of closed spaces and whatever, you know, the typical everyone has one or the other uh, one or the other uh, uh, element where, where the person is feeling uncertain. And and honestly, if I would knew that what I know today, I would say just go and, and try it out. You know, of course, be smart and don't do stupid things and, and, and don't uh, don't do reckless things uh, to yourself and to the others. But. Uh, uh, simply seek your sweet spot, try it out, uh, what, think about what's the worst thing that can happen, secure that it doesn't happen, but then enjoy fully the experience. So I think that will be one element. I mentioned already serendipity. I think that's one of the extremely important concepts which follows me the whole life and the whole career. Um, I would then, uh, I, I think two things I would not change, but I would still uh, give them as advice that that it's a good path and which person is is is, is uh, um, finding himself or herself is to stay active you know in in physical and in the mental context and basically to enjoy the experiences and not the material goods or or or, or something superficial so these would definitely be my advices to my younger self but to, to anyone now uh, uh, being in that age and, and thinking what to do with with, with the life and the career Hey, and 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 uh, because we're on this route already, what was your biggest learning moment from career? 
I, you can you can define it as failure, but failure is only if you didn't learn from it. And I have a strong feeling that you learn from everything that you hit your wall on. So where did it hurt the most? Or where did you <laughs> learn the most? <laughs> yeah, the various, for example, I don't know, I could have finished my bachelor's degree one or two years earlier. You know, I obtained it with master's and, and, and with some other things. It went flawlessly with bachelor's degree. I was so much distracted with everything else. I have to admit, you know, like job was attracting me more. My NGO engagement was attracting me more. I, I mean, uh, I, I think even, I mean, girls were attracting me more than, than that. <laughs> Every, everything was like somehow distracting me from that. I would probably uh, consider uh, learning focus at that time. And this this focus and this understanding that basically the career, the life, the good things in life are rather a marathon than the 100 meters race, you know. Uh, is uh, that would that would really that would really help because you know over time I learned to 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 build up on the patience and also to stay focused until certain things are finished and or um, uh, developed in the way. So that could be one of the elements I would change. Also, you know, like as I'm doing my PhD right now, I mean, in a, I would say in the final phase of my PhD, I'm just waiting for one journal paper to be published so I can submit it. And I can tell you, I, I did it for a couple of years parallel to the work, you know, and when I remember now, you know, coming home at eight o'clock or seven o'clock and then still having to write, let's say, a page for a scientific paper with certain quality, et cetera. I think that's that's something that's, of course, now way harder huh, than than it would have been, uh, let's say, 10 or 15 years ago where, where I had a bit less uh, uh, pressure and stress and everything else. So if I could turn back the time, I would probably advise, uh, you know, give advice to my younger self to do a PhD basically directly after the master studies to work in parallel, but then to, to work in, in a different uh, relation so that you, you know, like finish all those important academic milestones before going into the, with full speed into the career. However, everything works, you know, so like you said, if you learn from that, uh, like for example, I said, even with these, this one or two years which I, I could have done in a more efficient manner. Still, it doesn't. It didn't reflect on my connections, on my on my net value, on my learning experiences, or everything. Because you can catch up and or even surpass that what uh, what what has been uh, in the past. Yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting point. And 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 I would I would actually ask you, how important is education in your whole journey? It is very important. It's simply inseparable for, from that, what I'm doing. I'm, I said I, I really consider both formal education uh, as, as important as informal education, which I, uh, I obtained during my career. I think almost every year, you can see that on my LinkedIn uh, 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 page, uh, basically, I think every year, or every second year, I tend to do a major certificate. The last one I did um, was at the Stanford uh, University at Stanford campus on, on artificial intelligence. But there was, uh, whether it's area of negotiation, whether it's area of security certifications, whether it's area of uh, uh, risk uh, risk management or IT governance, I was always eager to learn something new and to try to somehow uh, uh, test myself whether I learned uh, uh, and and acquired these uh, these knowledge, uh, that knowledge and, and the skills. So so it's very important. And I, I said I think the continuous and lifelong learning is a is a mantra for everyone who wants to be successful in, in business and private life. Hey, and, and, and if you would take a look at yourself and I would ask you, what's, what's your superpower? <laughs> what's, what's your superpower? Honestly, I don't believe I have any superpowers. I think I'm a normal person like everyone else. Uh, I have a, I have a clear wish, you know, like I, I, one of my goals throughout my life since I went to, to, a gymnasium in Banyaluka, which gave me really a broad uh, spectrum of knowledge and and make me curious, made me curious about many things. Is you know, like I, I wish to be um, to 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 you know to be a way in a way like a person whose expertise uh, spans over a significant number of of, of subject areas. You know, it, it's so called the uh, Renaissance man. You know, like like Leonardo yeah. da Vinci was. You know, like in sense of understanding both art and the science and the politics and everything else. Or like Greek anti anti Greek uh, philosophers, or uh, fantastic Arabic uh, travelers with uh, which which uh, went through the world and 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 learned so much from 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 that. Um, 
and there's many many of the things which which inspire me in a way and, and basically i think that some that's something that guides me uh, throughout i mean I, I would i would feel unfulfilled if i would know only something about one area and not being able to have a certain broad perspective on things and like you said openness to, to yeah, so, and apply that. so your superpower is that you're curious so you're super cr- curious <laughs> yeah, you might say that super curious, but also hardworking. You know, I think, uh, like like I mentioned, I really think that I, I, some some someone might say, you know, like uh, you have a higher IQ or you have uh, um, uh, whatever business mind or you have uh, uh, the skill for this and that. But I think it's basically hard work. I always think of I don't know. Now th- these days, it's popular to 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 understand how, for example, Michael Jordan um, uh, or or some other. Uh, top athletes or top uh, scientists or top business people um, acquired or, or get to the point where they are. And what you can see as, as I think is a repeating pattern is really hard work. Do so many free shots so that you don't miss any of them, you know, invest an extra time, go extra mile. And, and even if you're tired, remind yourself, why are you doing this, you know, and try to, 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 to achieve it and try to do it. Of course, uh, without any costs for anyone else, only for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so it's actually uh, consistency and sacrifice. Sure. For yourself. And you said you said that you're curious about many things, uh, uh, and you gain inspirations also from many things. But what 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 drives you? What inspires you to wake up every morning and go? You know, I like like first trying you know it's 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 hard in our nature uh, to fight against our nature everyone every one of us you know like individualism etc I'm, I'm really inspired by non-selfish by uh, people by um uh, by smart activism by by knowledge sharing by revival of of values and, and by openness you know i often reflect you know i go and often reflect on those people which in uh, which which are acting that way or activities I often take a book or a movie, for example, that's a small insight. I, you know, like from time to take time, I take a book or a movie, which I would never normally look. That's not my, for example, genre, or that's something that I, that's an author I, would, I don't personally respect. And I would still take that and read it, make myself read it, just to understand what the other perspective is. And it's, I said, it, it's hard. Every second sentence or every minute of the movie or or whatever it is, documentary, you think it's not like that. I know it's not like that, you know, or, or I don't feel good about it. But still, it helps you to open the perspectives and to challenge your own opinion. So these kind of things are inspiring, uh, inspire me and I try to, to, to do them on a regular basis, yeah. And, and why is it so important to challenge your own opinion? I think because in a way, in a way, you know, like we always, especially successful people, especially intelligent people, you know, they tend to think that they discover the, you know, like the stone of wisdom and, and <laughs> that they not, you know, like learn anything new and, and, and that they know everything better. And, and we, we said it in the beginning. Take the ego out of the equation and try to open yourself uh, to the world. If you're reading only the content, yeah, which is basically inspiring you, you know, like and, and only the content which is which is going along the way how you think, I don't believe you can grow as a person and develop as a person. And, and let me give an example. If there's someone watching, let's say, Deutsche Welle, which is uh, uh, like one source of information, I believe that the person should at least once a month go and scroll uh, true or, or or click on on the channels such as CNN, such as Russian TV, such as uh, Indian national broadcaster or Chinese uh, uh, national television or um, Al Jazeera or something else, simply to to understand that there is a different perspective. Someone in the U.S. who's watching Fox News should take a look at at uh, at uh, NBC or uh, should should take a look vice versa. So I think that would. If all the people would act in that way, I think we would have way more understanding for each other. And the similar thing applies to expertise. If you have a room full of experts, you know, if one expert is is an admirer of one school, of one engineering thought or something like that, or one business uh, 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 advice, I think opening to another perspective, listening to another expert um, incredibly uh, uh, challenges and, and, and opens the perspective so that you can understand how you feel and what do you want to achieve even better. Yeah, so actually you have to try to understand 
the counterpart and see it through his eyes. Exactly. And ask questions in, instead of uh, judging. Exactly. Hey, in, um, what are you curious about right now? Many things, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, like, a very, very current topic is this so-called new normal. You know, like the pandemics hit the world. Uh, for many countries, this was the, let's say, the, the most challenging thing that happened since the, the World War II for, um, I think it, it, it like, it's, sh- you know, like made a shuffling, reshuffling in the many parts of society, challenged some of the, the persuasions, how the systems should work, etc. So I think this is something that's uh, interesting. Second thing is, which uh, I think the, the environment, environmental topics, we understand that we, you know, like, we borrowed this earth from our grandchildren and we didn't uh, got it as a, as a legacy from our grandparents. I think it's very important that we understand how do we want to tackle the topic of CO2 emissions in order to make uh, the world a better place and safer place to our kids. Um, and the third point, maybe topic about the diversity, you know, understanding how, how much openness can, uh, uh, you know, enrich us how business teams, how public sector teams, how people are more successful if they're in a diverse uh, environment, you know. And when I say diverse, I don't mean only gender. I mean race, religion, nationality, uh, uh, business background, handicap or not. Simply no one should forget where they are coming from, but they should all put their strengths together. And maybe maybe I'm an idealist there, but I mean, it's it's simply proven also both scientifically and in a business, uh, doing a huge business survey, such as, for example, one of the uh, one from McKinsey, that all these diverse teams are way more successful than one dimensional homogeneous teams. And I think this, this is something that I'm really curious about, this how this new normal diversity and environment uh, which are imperatives of this decade will play out together. You know what will come out of that, uh, out of this mix, which will definitely, uh, I would say, mark the twenties uh, from my perspective. Yeah? I think you, you just you just mentioned a very interesting thing, and this is also uh, you, sh- you should also have a look at. Oh, I admire people that are left-handed because they live in a world that is made for right-handed men and women. Yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you ever have you ever thought about it? Everything is made for even the cup of tea. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I respect uh, especially the the uh, the people who can use both. You know, ambidextrous people. You know, who can both use both uh, hands or both uh, parts of their brain in, in in I would say in a meaningful and and balanced manner. I think it's a fantastic skill. Uh, sadly, I cannot write with my left hand, but I would like to learn, you know, like, and then maybe that will also come on the agenda one day. Yeah? You also <laughs> asked, you know, like re- regarding curiosity, I have to also say, besides these ma- big topics, which are Im- impacting everyone's individual, public and uh, business life in technological context, I'm, of course, excited about the developments in the sphere of artificial intelligence and where this will go or end uh, how this will will develop in the next years. Then also blockchain. I don't think that the topic is gone. Maybe the cryptocurrencies are uh, having a I say like uh, like a peaceful phase or going through the hype curve currently. But I think blockchain promises uh, a lot. And I think, as I understood it correctly, the technology was first mentioned in the '90s. You know, but uh, be, you know became uh, a hit or very popular in the previous years. And of course, due to my current work, um, um, uh, I'm of course very much inter- interested about the high-speed networks, telecommunication networks, so-called digital highways, you know, ways how to connect the people on Earth and basically break the digital divide. You know? Well, actually, you, you mentioned a, a good one, uh, blockchain, and that goes for artificial intelligence. I would put, put those between quotes, artificial intelligence, I would say artificial imagination, but that's a topic for another <laughs> conversation, maybe. Um, but uh, blockchain is uh, dated from 80s. I can even share some books uh, with, with you that actually explain, but we didn't have the technology to um Implement it in uh-huh. any way. So now, now, now it's the now is the day, and and as for the first three topics, um, just a question from from the perspective of I have a feeling that it goes for as as gender equality, the diversity, um, uh, what what is happening today within the organization is the same thing as that uh, organization now are turning into we are purpose driven companies. Um, we mm-hmm. care about our employees, etc. Do you think that the companies do that because they truly believe that or because it's a checkbox so they can comply with the rest of the world? 
I think it's like with individuals. There are people who, who do certain things just because the society expects them or they believe they can profit from that on a short and long term. Uh, uh, and the other people who really, truly uh, live certain beliefs and values. You know, I think the same is... Uh, with, uh, with companies, um, I believe that I work for a company who truly believes that our purpose in the world is to connect the people, connect the people to different opportunities, to, to not to stop until everyone is uh, on board and not until everyone is connected. And I think that's an important, important element. I believe personally in that mission. I share that uh, passion and that vision. Um, but I'm sure that there are some, some, I said, some, some subjects or some uh, institutions or organizations which uh, fulfill that, let's say, uh, let's say that norm of you know defining their vision and trying to be, I don't know, uh, uh, in a uh, quote unquote sexy in a certain way, but just you know like uh, putting the buzzwords um, out there. You know? Yeah, yeah. You, you you don't want to be hired for. Um, your your gender nor for uh, uh, your cultural background or color for that matter you want to be hired because you fit the team and you fit the purpose of the team uh, and the company of course um, so I would say you want to be hired as human being and actually everything else is irrelevant um, sure. but- and, and I mean also treated as a human being you know the, the problem is you know like you have many talented people with different backgrounds and some of these people especially in some other countries I would say outside of the uh, Western Central Europe outside of U- European Union and and and, and this uh, this continent um, don't even get the chance to come in any selection process to show their intelligence or their capabilities or their their fit to a certain position or to a certain role in the society because, you know, they're, they're marginalized and they are threatened or or excluded. So I think we should enable them access. And when we do that, then we should treat everyone uh, the same way, basically saying who's the best women or men for a job. And uh, how do we, how do we basically enable everyone to, to provide a contribution? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a beautiful one. Hey, is there something that I should have asked but I didn't? You're you're a great interviewer. I have to say, it's it's hard to find a question which you haven't asked. But you know, one one thing is uh, I mentioned in the beginning. You know, like uh, um, there is, and I will try to connect it to to what what we talked about today. You know, like um, for example, the, about the fears. You know, today I, I can say proudly for myself that I'm not afraid of anything. You know, both in physical and in in in, in non physical world. I, I did parachute jumping, quad bikes, bungee jumping, canyoning, live mud, you know, diving with the sharks, conquering the mountain peaks, going into the glaciers and, uh, you know, and, 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 and the deserts and everything else, sleeping in, in the open. And I think I, in that way, I fulfilled many of my dreams. I did it all. I enjoyed it. And, but I always had a healthy dose of respect and preparation. So it's not like just being crazy and, and everything else, but having a health. Dose. So, so first message from that is conquering uh, the, the fears and obstacles and constraints and basically turning yourself in another person. That's 100% possible. I can confirm it. Doesn't happen overnight, but over years and maybe sometimes over decades that that happens. And, but the, however, there is one thing I'm afraid of. And uh, when I look at the trends in the previous couple of years, um, one thing I'm, I'm afraid of that the people will become, the societies will become too virtual, too distant, you know, and 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 on a some in a some way too narrow-minded, you know, too ex- too much uh, too too excluded, too self-sufficient, you know, and uh, too radical in a way. Also, whatever the the, the proposition is. Somehow going to extreme is from my from one extreme to another is not a not a good thing. So I hope that my fears here will not come to a to a manifestation. But what I observe is is uh, definitely unsettling, and I would like us as a society to to counteract this virtual uh, elements, distant elements, narrow mindedness with uh, with uh, different traits and different uh, different approach. So, so this is actually due to the in individualization of the society, right? So everybody's on their mobile phone. They're living in a, in a kind of safe bubble where dopamine is rushed by likes and, and comments on their pictures. It's definitely one of the aspects. It's one of the aspects, you know, if you balance it well, you can do likes, but you can do sports. You can do humanitarian engagement for your environment. 
you can help the elderly, you can teach the kids, and you can still do the likes. However, if you do only one thing or another thing, that that's that's damaging. And also, if you if you're like we spoke during this interview, if you're like so much convinced that you 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 or your people or your organization is the only one which is right and which is true and 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 honest and and uh, proper i think that's that's something that's very dangerous in in, in, in the elements so so every case should be looked at and every case should be judged for itself and uh, without the bias without um a closeness and i think that that would definitely uh, i think help us as the human race to be better so so <clears throat> If I would give you a magic wand and you could make this happen, how how would that world look like? So to tackle your fear, it'll be a growing world, world 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 which develops and world world which tries to make it uh, sustainable. Not I said to not to destroy a beautiful planet, not to destroy our relations, not to become too virtual, known too real, not to go into the dark ages from the mind perspective, but also not to dream only about the stars without solving the problems in in in, in our environment. You know, what I you know, often often remember is you know like we have in Silicon in the Silicon Valley, I've met so many bright minds, so many incredible people. And which are solving the problems of the future, like for example, how to send someone to Mars. At the same time, in that same San Francisco, you have non-functioning, dirty, and non-functional, um, uh, uh, basically public transportation. You have which would take a person from house A to to destination B. You have I don't know poverty, crime. You have uh, people sleeping on the streets. So I would say. One part of the bright mind should really tackle the space problems. The other part should solve the everyday problems so that the, the place where they live, but also the whole world is a better place. So, so equality and, and, and actually distribution of riches and wellness should be for the whole world and not for the good 3% we belong to. Uh, that's 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 a not an easy topic i have to say i mean I, i'm afraid that something that i can say could be interpreted in a, in a wrong manner i think definitely many more m way more people should get uh, opportunity and and the chances but i believe nothing should be given to anyone uh, as granted i believe that hard work uh, like i mentioned is one of my principles should be a principle of everyone hard work engagement uh, compassion and if the people show that i think that the there will will be and could be the way better distribution of, of any chances, opportunities, and goods. You know, and uh, I think yeah. in that way balancing it uh, would be definitely uh, something that we have to work on and to to improve the current status. Now you you have to be where the luck can find you, and luckily today, um, of course, uh, it's not uh, uh, good for for only the likes, but actually if you want to distribute knowledge or actually show the world your innovation, etc., the internet is the right way. Uh, you have to be in the place that where luck can find you. On another side, yeah. if, uh, if, if, um, if Da Vinci was born in, uh, I don't know, in Mumbai at the same, uh, at the same uh, age, uh, I mean, the Renaissance uh, age, I think we wouldn't have these inventions today. Yeah, um, that's that's true. He he also had luck. I mean, but he used his opportunities in the best way. There were um, people throughout the history which came from very humble conditions, etc., and still changed the, their environment or even changed the world in in a way. You know, so I think yes, there should be certain pre preconditions, and and but however, people should also not forget that they have opportunities and they can pursue them. Um, and, and try to fight, at least you can create something better for the next generation. And even if you don't do a quantum, if you don't start with $1 and end it uh, as a billionaire, maybe you can create an environment where your kid or grandkid can come to a point where they can be uh, living a life of, of less uh, less worries and, 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 and being able to do a more impact in, in the world. Yeah. No, I agree with you totally, and I, I would say from uh, looking from the humble environment and doing great things, or the people that, or the guy that invented twenty first century is Tesla, of course, and he didn't nothing was given to him; he invented it, and he changed the world on his own. Exactly, came coming from a small village, going to several countries until he was seek, searching for himself, not only for his inventions. He wanted to see which environment suits him the best, where he can 
grow and where he can, uh, I said, to, to self-fulfill his dreams uh, or, or his, his visions. And basically said throughout that search, uh, he started humble. He died in a humble way because he was uh, passionate about the science and, uh, and, and uh, engineering. And uh, I have to say, he is also one of the, the fantastic examples of or fantastic uh, um, inspirations for many people in the world. And, and coming to that, um, if I would give you the possibility to dine with three people, alive or dead, who would those people be? You know, it's it's extremely hard. I would like to have a table, you know, where with 20, 30 people, you know, these long medieval tables, you know, where everyone can say <laughs> say or, or do something. I, I mean, it, it's hard. It's it's hard to choose the tree, but you know, like spontaneously, I can say, you know, like some people. Uh, really re, are really inspiring Let, let's you know like every person you can find some flaw you can find some you know like something that they were really good at i think leonardo da vinci would definitely be one of these persons uh, uh sitting at the table um i mean one of the persons could be for example it could be a scientist it could be like someone like a uh, um, a great artist uh, uh, could be a billionaire but it also could be um one one person there's uh there's a there's a guy in, in, in northern India who who invested time and energy to basically um, forest to to plant a forest in um, something that has become a desert. You know, he brought the life back and he imported exactly. animals and uh, yeah, and, yeah yeah yeah. And he did it in a way that he planted one tree at a time every day for thirty or forty years now. So it's it's incredible, you know, like this guy I would like to meet, you know, like to have that kind of focus, that kind of passion. He was poor. He could not buy hundreds of trees, you know, like and hundreds of plants and to plant them. He was planting a tree at a time. And now his his forest, which is named after him, uh, is basically uh, basically a size of, of several uh, central parks in, in New York. So I think he did an amazing thing. So I would like to have Da Vinci's and Teslas of this world, but I would also, or or or, or, or other uh, inspiring people like Elon Musk today, or or someone else. But on the other hand, I would also have uh, enjoy people who who lived and started from very humble things and tried to to be the change which they want to see in the world and do something for for the environment. I think we can fill the table of thirty. With that, definitely. <laughs> definitely, yeah. Two of us would find, I think, even 60, 70, 80, you know, like <laughs> a gala dinner. A gala dinner. <laughs> hey, Boroslav, it was really nice talking to you. I have one final question, and that would be the key takeaway for our audience. So, from your experience, rich experience of traveling and doing things out of your comfort zone, what are your key takeaway or one key takeaway for our audience that they should focus on? I will give you a couple of short ones. One yeah, you... well, 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 your message to the world. So, so, so <laughs> you're, you're... <laughs> it, it's, it's hard, you know. I feel like, uh, like I'm writing my own epitaph, you know. Something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I think we had like many, many uh, interesting points during the, the the interview itself, both in your questions and I think in in the way how we interacted. One of them would be definitely enjoy experiences, not material goods spend the time traveling, discovering the world and your environment, speaking with people, um, enjoy the things, um, um, stay active, you know, physically and mentally, do sports, you know, stay healthy, keep people with contact for our mental health, uh, inspire other people, uh, educate the young ones, educate your environment, you know, read, watch, uh, uh, do meaningful games, whatever works for you. And Last but not the least, we also mentioned it today, go out of the comfort zone. Exactly when you hit the sweet spot, unless you have a newborn or, or maybe someone in your family who's sick you have to take care of, if it, that's not the case, exactly when you hit the sweet spot, you should move yourself into a new spot that will eventually over time become again sweet and where you can leave a, la a lasting trace. And on that way, serendipity will follow you. Well, I think uh, that's still epic. So thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. And I think the listeners will definitely enjoy every single question and your answer. Um, it was great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I, I enjoyed uh, this conversation. And I would say good luck to you and your listeners uh, in, in, in best way uh, to discover their themselves. Yeah? Thank you, Boroslav. Likewise, likewise, and stay safe and healthy, I would say. You too. Bye-bye. 
Thank you very much for listening, dear ladies and gentlemen. This was Borislav Tadic. Enjoy experiences, not material goods. Join me next week for the interview with Karim Hashem. He's change management consultant and mindset coach. And let's hear a short part of our interview. I think he is, I have to thank him instead of uh, accusing him. But still, it's so important that if teachers are listening now, never, ever, ever say to a child that he can do something, even if you know he can't. I remember my father told me, Karim, you can be president if you want. And I believed it. And I still believe, I, I truly still believe that if I want, I can be president of the Netherlands. If this short part raised your curiosity, well, tune in next week and hear everything Kareem has to say about mindset, coaching, change management, and how to cope with your challenges. For now, this was Challenging the Status Quo podcast with your host, Amir Sabirovic. See ya! Thank you.